I'm Elijah, senior communications and theology double major. I might as well give the SAU greeting. So I'm from Grand Rapids. I live in the Side OK house. Come on. And I'm not exactly sure still what God holds in store for me after college. Now, I know, I know, usually if I was getting up to speak, I'd have a queue of quips, memes, and lame jokes. But tonight is a bit different, and it's a bit serious, and I'm going to take a drink of water because my mouth is very dry. Okay. Anyway, we're going to get right into it. God, sexuality, the church, they're all big topics. I hope tonight to let you walk alongside me for a bit of my story as we explore them. I implore you to listen. As the writer Gregory Coles said, let's make promises to each other. I promise to tell you my story, the whole story. If you'll listen, I'll promise I'll tell you everything. And you can decide for yourself what you want to believe about me. I'm taking another drink. <laughs> In 2012, like seven years ago, my dad sat me down to have one of those super awkward porn talks where he wanted to impress onto me the importance of respect in my thoughts towards women. The conversation was tense, and eventually I burst out sobbing. In between gasps for air, I finally said what I'd been thinking about for a long time. It doesn't even matter. I'm not attracted to girls. I'm only attracted to guys. And with that sentence... As a conservative Christian freshman in high school, I verbally, verbally acknowledged something for the first time I had only ever been attracted to guys. This is really hard to say. Even now I'm standing before you all, I'm quivering with anxiety. In preparing for tonight, I have been completely spent and stressed. I'm sharing an aspect of me that has deeply affected my life and often comes at great cost. I suppose this is my first time ever giving my whole testimony synthesizing together two very different parts of me that I haven't put together before. So I want to share this story. The one where a boy born into a Christian family realizes he's attracted to the same sex and he might be that dreaded three-letter word, gay. There's a lot of pain in it, but also a lot of hope. Tonight isn't about arguing or defending certain theology. It's about stepping into a place of understanding and being honest. So I'm going to put my cards on the table right now. I'm a celibate gay Christian. That means that I am a Christian attracted to the same sex that upholds the traditional sexual ethic. The traditional sexual ethic basically says that sexual expression is for the marriage relationship between a man and a woman. I believe that this is a biblical doctrine, but my point is not to argue for it right now. My goal tonight in being vulnerable is to maybe offer a path ahead for the church to push towards deeper community and self-sacrifice but also more love for their sexual minority siblings or those who experience non-heterosexual attractions. When I finally opened myself up to my parents, I didn't even know what I was walking into. I had absolutely no understanding of how to respond to non-heterosexuality, and neither did my parents, though they loved me and still do. They were shattered, disappointed, hurt, and confused. I was ashamed, guilty, and scared. They thought maybe it would pass like a phase. In the years after that moment, my dad occasionally said terribly hurtful, hurtful things in his anger, but we largely avoided the conversation. I tried to figure out everything on my own through high school, or at least what felt like was on my own. In high school, I wasn't new per se to all of this, but I hadn't acknowledged it before. I remember in sixth grade being distinctly attracted to another boy during sixth grade camp. He asked the cabin if anyone could loan him a shirt, and I let him borrow one of mine, but he never gave it back. I know I was lusting in junior high, and as sinful hormonal boys sometimes do, and 